You are welcome to CSC 101 video Introduction to Computer Science. This is Study Session 2 Introduction to Computer System 2. In the last study session, you learned about the basic definitions of the computer system, its history, and classifications. However, in this study session, you will learn about characteristics basic elements and components of a computer system. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you, a computer was defined as a tool or a machine that can be used for processing data to give a required information. You are also thought that it, a computer is capable of taking input data through the keyboard, storing it into a diskette, hard disk, or any other medium process it at the central processing unit and give out the result as output on the screen. Now, let us go to the characteristics of a computer. The, here I'll be discussing about six characteristics of a computer. The first one is speed. The computer can manipulate that large data at incredible speed and re the response time can be very, very fast. Also looking at accuracy, its accuracy is very high and its consistency can be relied upon. Then storage. A computer has both internal and external storage facilities for holding data and instructions. Automatic. Once a program is in the computer's memory, it can run automatically time it is opened. The individual has little or no instruction to give again. Then we can look at reliability. Being a machine, a computer does not suffer human traits of tiredness or lack of concentration. Then the last one, but not the least, is flexibility. It can perform any type of task once it, once it can be reduced to logical steps. In fact, modern computers can be used to perform a variety of functions like online processing, multi-programming, real-time processing, and so on. Now, Let's look at the concepts of a computer system. From this diagram is a schematic diagram of, uh, of a computer. You can see we have four main building blocks. We have the input, the process, the output, and memory. Let me explain this to you. The data is entered through the input device, like, the, like let's say keyboard, disk, or mouse. These input devices help convert data and program into a language that the computer can process. The data received from the keyboard is processed by the CPU, that is the central processing unit. The CPU controls and manipulates the data that produces the information. The CPU is usually housed within the protective cartridge. The processed data is either stored in the memory or sent to the output device as per the, let's say, the command that was given by the user. The memory unit holds data and programs instruction for processing data. Output device translates the processed information from the computer into a form that the computer operator can understand. Now, let us look at the components of the computer system. The first one we'll be looking at is the motherboard. The motherboard is the main component inside the case. It is a large rectangular board with integrated circuit that connects various parts of computers such as CPU, RAM, CD, hard drive, as well as any other peripherals connected via ports or the expansion. Now let's look at the second part. Uh, the second component is the power supply. This supplies uh, the power needed for the computer system to come up. Then the third one I'll be discussing about is a removable media device. What are removable media devices? These are devices that are used, that can be used uh, to store data, and, but they are not resident in the computer system. They can be removed, such as the flash drive. You can see from the picture here, flash drive, floppy drive, and CD or DVD are wrong. Then the second storage, the secondary storage, it has number four points. Examples are hard disk, 
a rain area controller and also a solid state drive. Now, this is a picture of a sand car. That's another component of a computer system. Then there are other peripherals like mouse, webcam, keyboard, headphones, we have scanner and all the rest. These and many more make up of the components of a computer system. Thank you for listening. See you in the next class. Welcome back. This video is for study session 4, computer hardware. After you must have studied this study session, you should be able to describe computer devices, discuss the functions of uh, CPU, explain primary and secondary story devices, and you should be able to describe inputs and output devices. Now, computer hardware. This is the collection of physical elements that constitutes a computer system. The hardware computer components are central processing units, primary storage, secondary storage, input devices, and output devices. Now, let's take a look at them one by one. A CPU is the electronic circuitry within the computer that carries out the instructions of a computer program by performing the basic arithmetic, logical, control, and input and output operations specified by the instructions. A CPU is basically divided into two, arithmetic logic unit and the control unit. The arithmetic logic unit, also known as ALU, contains arithmetic circuits that can subtract, multiply, or even divide two numbers. More complex operations such as finding the square root of a number are done by sequence of these basic operations. Now, let's move on to the control unit. The control unit controls the whole computer system by performing the following uh, functions. It directs and coordinates all operations called, called for by the program. It activates the appropriate circuits necessary for inputs and output devices. And the third one, it causes the entire computer system to operate in an automatic manner. Now, a primary storage is also called the internal storage or memory. These store programs and that are currently being processed by the CPU. And it also needs electricity to stay on. That means they can be easily erased when there is power outage. An example is a RAM that is shown to you on your screen right now. Now, secondary storage is an optional attachment to the CPU. It's non-volatile, unlike the primary storage which is very volatile. Then it is a permanent form of storage. Examples include hard disk, floppy disk or CD or DVD as shown to you on your screen right now. Now, there are input devices. Examples include keyboard, mouse, trackball, document reading devices, even scanners. There are examples of input devices. And what do they do? It's true this means that uh, a computer receives information. Now, output devices. These Devices are set output from the data processing device. It converts it into a form suitable for use by the computer's human operators. Examples include printers, monitor, which is also known as the visual display unit. This is the end of the class. Thank you for listening.